Hello my friends, John LaRuffy here with another Straight Up Solo and in this episode we're going to take a look at Mist Wind. I'm going to show you how this plays solo and I'm going to tell you what I think about it. All right, let's get started. Okay folks, and as usual, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. If you have, I really do appreciate that support. Thank you very much. Okay, so the first thing this game is, is a pick up and deliver network building game. All right, and that's what you're doing. You're really you're going to be building your network with these outposts, which are over here, and that will help you move further and faster across the board. You will also use these networks to fulfill certain network cards for points. And I'm in the third round now, so I've had to discard one of mine, third out of four, three, three out of four rounds. And you're trying to connect these locations on the board. If you connect both of them to the center location, you get seven points. If you just connect one, you get three at the end of the game. Same thing with this one. There's an easy, a medium, and hard, okay? And you can also use your transports, which are these whales over here, which you can have a maximum of three in the game. If you build all three, you start with one, to count as some of that network. Even though it's temporarily there, it would count for the moment you could score that card. The other thing you could do is, like I said, build these transports out on the board and make a permanent network. And that helps you move from one place to another quickly and also helps you handle or have more transports and be able to effectively move them across the board um, without having to spend too much krill. And krill is what you use. Every space you move from that doesn't have a transport, it costs one krill. So if I wanna move this transport here to there, I'd have to pay one krill. However, if he was already here, I could go here for free, I could go there for free, and then I have to spend one more and then I could go there for free, right? So the idea is the transports, oh, and also if you move through your transport area, that's also free. So if you go through your own, that counts. So either an outpost or a transport allows you to move out of that location for free, which is good, all right? So that helps you get across the board. Now I said this game's a pick up and deliver and that's exactly what it is. Every turn you are gonna play one of your action discs with a number on it. You're going to take that action and then you are going to move optionally however much you want with any number of transports. Once you've completed your movement, then you can load or unload one cargo on each transport from a city. So like if I wanted to load, for instance, I just loaded this previous turn, I loaded um, this pink right here. I can't put another one on there, but I could put one on of a different color, discard it if I really wanted to, okay? But the goal is I'm trying to move this to this spot right here because that's in demand. And if I unloaded that city, which I'll show you here in a second, I can either get two wood or a coin and I will automatically get this loading token, this demand token, and that will be worth one point, okay? And each of these small tokens is worth one, the big ones are worth two. And at the end of the game, you're gonna see which, who has the majority of tokens this, the three AI players, which is actually really easy to run, even though there's three of them, three AI players will sum up all the tokens they've gathered, and whoever's got the most gets the five points of each of the four regions, okay? So that's how you're scoring those points there. You're scoring points by um, loading and trying to unload at different places, get the destinations, to make your networks. You can also get your... Um, you can connect these cities here to whatever that icon is. So for instance, if I build two transports there, one, two, and have one in this city, then I will have connected this and that will be um, six points for me at the end of the game if I can get it done, okay? And subsequently, same thing over here, if I connect this town over here, so that'd be three transports like that, etc. The other thing you could do on, at the end of your turn, and that's when you claim those, is if you qualify for any of these achievements, for instance, if I have four outposts that are in this region, the, the uh, gray region, I can claim that for four points. And so basically every turn you're playing down one of your ships, you're taking that action, you're moving, you're unloading or loading, and you're claiming a reward. And those last three things are optional. Now you'll have a supply of steel and wood, which you can use to build outposts, one steel, one wood for one outpost, two steel, two wood for one um, transport. And that's what you're really using these in the game for. Or you can trade them for money, and you can use the money for a variety of reasons. The coins can do a lot of different things. And then you have the krill, which is basically like your, it's, it's your gas for your 
um, whale transport, for lack of a better word. Okay, and then you have coins, and you use the coins, like I said, for a variety of things. You might use them uh, to buy cards that might be end game scoring, one time use, uh, instant cards, um, or for the rest of the time cards. And then you also can use coins to do various actions over here. So, the easiest thing I think to do at this point, because I've explained enough of the game for you to get a feel of what's going on, is to go ahead and demonstrate a round. So, the first thing we have to do is we have to discard three random um, discs, one from each color, and one that I'm not going to use, because what I didn't tell, talk about yet is that each of these discs have a number from one to five, and when you want to play them down, you can't play them in a space that doesn't match the number. So, if I wanted to play this two, I can only play it in spaces that have a two, like here, 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 or there. And also, on, on these three sections over here, first come, first served, only serve. So they block. You or someone else will block a space if you go there. But any number of players can go onto these. However, the last player to go on there, and you'll make a little stack of chips, whoever's on the top will get this bonus at the end of the round. Okay, so those vary. And... The one thing with this game is there are a ton of icons and everything is iconic. So you're going to have to learn how to speak the language. And that is kind of the one drawback, but it's not the end of the world. Luckily, it's fairly um, reasonable to understand. Okay, so which action don't I want to do? And this is kind of an interesting situation. It, it limits you. You try to figure out, okay, you, there's no way to tell at all in the solo game what they might or might not be going after so you really want to look is there something i really don't want well the five is nice because it gives me a lot of resources and i don't have any of those so i'm going to save the five do i not want like the one is that so this is at the one at the end of the game i would get three points for what's that say have an outpost in each region is that an outpost well, I'm not going to get into it because there's, like I said, there's a lot of icons here. Oh, okay, three points for each set of outposts um, slash transports in all four regions. That's what that is. Okay, so that's the way to score some points. Um, I really need to spend coins, so I definitely don't want to get rid of my two, so let's keep the two. And I probably can live without... I probably could live without the, the, the four. So I'm going to set the four aside. and not going to use the four, okay? All right, so then what you do on the turn of each of the players that are playing, the, your three opponents, it's very simple. You go in opponent order, and they're going to flip over, and they're going to put it on the first region that they qualify for. Okay, if that region is blocked by something, they will skip to the next one. And they will, they will only ever put one token in each region. So you can guarantee they're going to put at least one token over here. And when they do put it over there, they will take the bottom of these demand tiles and put it in there for their majority. Okay, so we're going to do that for all three of them. There's the one that's blocked. And there's the three. Now, if I'd drawn another two of a different color, then I would have skipped over to that region right there. So I guarantee now that I've got the four and the five and I discarded the four, so I know I can get this five at any time. So I'm not gonna do that. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna play this two right away because I've got a lot of coins and I need to build some transports. So I can do this up to two times. I can build two transports or two outposts or one of each. And I wanna build two outposts because I really wanna fulfill one of these category cards and or these network cards and i really need some come on i really need some help getting from one place to another because i don't have any krill okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to spend six coins right here so i was at eight i'll go down to two and i'll build two of these outposts and i can fulfill a couple things i could it right no right now if i wanted to i could build both these right there and get that uh, but that is not going to be as helpful as other actions here. Hmm. Oh, actually, no, I have to take that back. I have to connect this all the way to that one, not to this one. 
So that's a little further away because notice it matches, right? This is the exact place. It's got to be this territory. I have to connect all the way across. Well, that's getting close and that'll help me if I connect, if I put this here and I put this here and that way I'll at least be able to get off the spot I'm on and go to a krill spot. I'll kind of show how that's going to work. Okay, so that's my six. Now, that gets me closer to doing some of the things that I want to do. And I'm happy with that. Now, I've got to move, okay? So, all right, I don't have to, but I can move. I can move any number of transports I want, but I don't have any krill. I only have one. All right, I have zero. So the only one I can really move is this guy right here. He is holding this brown. I'd like to get him over here. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to move him to this location right here, and then I don't have any way to move him. I'm out of gas. However, the nice thing about this location being that it's krill, you can load krill for without displacing this. And so I can actually load one krill from that area without displacing my good, which is nice because I can use that on a subsequent turn to get over here to fulfill that demand, okay? And then I don't have anything to claim rewards. I'm, I've got three out of the four here, so I can't get that. I, I talked about these I can't get, and I haven't gotten that yet. So there's no rewards or achievements I can claim. So my turn's over. So we go again to the next round. This is a four. That's filled up. That card is blocked. A five. This card is blocked. And a one. That card's blocked. Just happens that they went there. So, I have a 1, a 3, and a 5 left. Well, what would be nice is to be able to get more leverage out of that green spot if I could. So, I could take this card and I could spend that to build another green outpost. And what that effectively would do would allow me to get this. And so, I'm going to do that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this 3... I spend two, two coins. I take the card and I can use it at any time because of this situation, but I am gonna use it right now to build an outpost on that green spot right here. Okay, and effectively now I can move. So I'm going to move. Um, and actually, yeah, I can move. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend that krill I was just talking about. I'm gonna spend that over here and I'm going to move this guy here. And then I'm gonna unload this. And that's gonna give me this right here. So that will be worth one point. Plus I can take two wood or a coin. I'm taking the two wood. This goes back into the discard or whatever you wanna say, the stock. And then I can load another krill from there. So him being over there is kind of like, he's just kind of in a little gas station for it, which is nice. Then I move this down and we put another one of these in there. All right, now look, I can claim this achievement. This achievement means that I've connected, oh no, that means, come on, John. That means I connected all these. Well, I've got this one almost connected so that goes to there but i'm missing this and i've got that so i'm so close to be able to get this but you have to connect all of the territory flags it's not just ones in that territory it says connect all territories with outposts and or transports so i don't think i'm pretty sure that means the flags i'll have to look that up i'll have to get some clarification but i'm pretty sure that means all the flags okay so I didn't quite get there, but now, however, if I had been able to move this transport here, I would have gotten them all connected. So it was close. All right, so my turn is done. I didn't claim anything. Now we go back here, etc. cetera. And we do this four times, so you're out of poker chip, or uh, well, yeah, they like poker chips. You're out of tokens. And then at the end of the turn, you'll basically get rid of, well, no, you know what, I, would, I do wanna show you some of these. So let's do one more here. All right, so this is a one, can't go there, can't go there. It can go there. This is a three. It can go here. Oh, I'm getting lucky here. They're not scoring a lot of those. All right, so no, no. So here, we put this over here. So what it's gonna do is, when it takes this two, it's gonna take this and put it in its stock over there. 
which isn't good for me because I was about to deliver that, but luckily there's another one, so I don't get completely closed on that move, all right? And at the end, someone else could go there if they want, but right now, he would get the bonus, but he's not, he doesn't take any bonuses, so it doesn't matter. So it comes to me. <clears throat> now, with this five, I could get my resources, or with this one, I effectively could do this. I want to do the resources because I really want to build, I really want to build more things here if at all possible. So I'm going to take this five and I'm going to get three wood, two of the iron, one krill, and that I get there. And then I move again. Well, now I can at least do some movement here. So what I'd like to do, now this is interesting. So I do want those seven points. But I'm over there and in kind of a bad place for that. Huh. So I've got a good decision to make here. The question I have is, do I move over here to, to finish the connection? Does it even finish the connection? Yeah, because it would go here, 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 and around. Yeah, I'm going to do that because that's seven points. So I'm going to go up here and up there. Now... Unfortunately, I can't load anything. What did I do for my action? Yeah, it's that. I can't load anything, but I do qualify for that to, to claim this. And this is seven points, and I definitely need the points. So because I've got this connected to this, connected to that, connected to that. So we're good. Uh, I don't think it has to go all the way around. I'll have to check that later, but it doesn't say that. It just says connect all territories with transports and or outposts. So I think that's legit. It doesn't need to be completely circled. At least I don't think so. I'll find out later. Okay, so that's that's what I did. So there's a lot of those tough decisions of what I want to do with a network building. How do I want to stay out ahead of the deliveries? How do I make sure I get some majorities here? And already he's really clobbering me in majorities except for gray, which I don't have any, but he's got the green pretty well locked up. He's got the brown locked up and he's got this locked up. So I'm way behind there. There's lots of work to do. And anyway, you're going to basically do that. You play four rounds, and at the end of the game, you're trying to score in this game. In, in the solo mode, you've got an easy, a medium, and a hard. So, the easy means I have to claim one achievement, which I did. One network token, which I haven't done yet, which is one of these. Okay? And score at least 30 points. Medium would mean I have to complete your network card, a network card. Claim two achievements, claim two network tokens, and score 45. And then hard is complete network card, claim three achievements, three network tokens, and it's 60 points. And so you're really working to do really three criteria, but I don't like some of the other games that have criteria. It's not like it's this or this or this. They just keep stacking. So you can say, I want to try to get the best condition I can. And it wouldn't be like, oh, well, if I didn't play the easy game, then I don't qualify for this. It doesn't matter. You, you either win on easy, medium, or hard, your choice, but you can keep stacking. All right, so let me tell you what I think about it. So I am so excited about this game. I finally found a pick up and deliver that does what I was looking for. I've played so many pick up and delivers and I always end up a little flat footed on them for whatever reason, I don't know why it is. But this one finally hits it where I want it to hit. And I think it's because there is both the network outpost building to make connections for points, but also to help you get to where you want to be without having without having to um, pay so much in the krill. That plus the variable cards that come out every round, you have new cards, you have new things coming out, and the type of actions and the tension of which action you want to take is really cool. And and the other thing is it's <laughs> I'm so happy that I can play with this, this type of game without having to do the fiddliness of working out what other AIs are gonna do all over the board with what they're doing. I mean, it, just the fact that you're blocking is plenty because there's no board to board interaction in this, the multiplayer game except for them taking tokens away from you. 
So whatever you do, and I guess if they if they beat you to the punch to one of the achievements, that would be another thing, or the tokens, it would be another thing. But really, that's not the end of the world, right? I mean, those are minor things, comparatively speaking. It's not like they are taking goods out of something you can't get, because each of the goods locations has an infinite supply of that. And you only have to put in, you can only load in one. So instead of like having to figure out how do I deal with, you know, loading multiple here and multiple there and everything else, it's just... It's either there or it isn't. You load it or you don't. You unload it or you don't, you qualify. They take over the majorities, they take those tokens, it's, it moves that along, they block cards, and it's so simple for them to do so you can focus all your, all your brain power on what you're trying to do. And I really like that. I think that really contributes to my enjoyment of a game like this. You know, I've played a lot of pickup and delivers and I love the idea of the mechanic, but like I said, most of them end up falling flat for me in some way, shape, or form. Not all of them, but this one takes the cake. I am so excited. And you know what? I, I didn't back this as a Kickstarter backer, although I was lucky enough to find a Kickstarter edition in my flags. Because for whatever reason, it wasn't looking enticing enough. I guess I was worried that it would be really tough to play with all these different AIs. And that is totally not the case could be the easiest AI system I've played in forever and it does such an effective job. So I am super, super high on this game. I love it. I really do. And it's exciting. It's fun. There's a lot of really cool puzzles you're trying to do. You can't do everything, but you want to do a lot of this and that. So there's all sorts of choices. It's not straightforward, but it's not overly complex. The rules in the game are just a couple of pages. They're really, I think it's really like four or five or five, six pages of rules tops. Uh, and it really just, it's all about the decisions here. So it's one of those games that's kind of easy to learn and tough to master. There's a lot of strategy and there's also a lot of tactics. Strategy because you have your long-term goals, you have your cards, you have your achievements. Tactics because the board is changing, what you can get for what you want and how you get those things in the majorities, that all changes with it. Um, just really a really fun game and one that I think looks cool. I think if you watch my unboxing, I said it really looked cool. I think that that lends to it. I like the, the look of the map. I like the look of the game itself. But it's just a lot of fun. Just a ton of fun. I, I really, really enjoy it. And I don't think it'd be tough to play with other people or to teach other people if I ever get to. But if you're one of those, I'd say, yes, this is what I want to bring because I'd, like I'd like to show others because it's just so cool. So big, big praise for me in this game. I'm very excited about it and I really like it. I, I do not see it leaving my collection, which I can't say about all sorts of other pickup and delivers where I've gotten them, I've tried them a couple times and it's like, no, I'm just not getting it. I just don't feel it. It's just something about it. This game doesn't have that. This game, it's not difficult to move from one place to another. It's just more efficient. You can get further away. There's more actions than just grab and take and go. The combinations of the cards make it interesting. The combination of the action spaces get, make it interesting. Your ability to just grab bulk loads of goods that you need to build your infrastructure is cool. I just, oh, it's really good, really good. I'm really, really high on this one and I think it's really cool. So I really hope that if you like pickup and delivers, you check this out. If you don't like pickup and delivers or network building, of course, there's nothing here for you, right? And if you want some kind of major interactive pick up and deliver with demands that are all over the place, maybe this one doesn't have it, but that's okay. There's enough market fluctuation in this that I find it is, it is really good. Um, it's plenty for me. So thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I really don't have a lot of bad things to say about this game, except for the icons. You just got to learn. But for the most part, they're okay. Um, they don't give you in these, in these things, these are nice. They're nice and large. They don't give you every single thing you could use, but they give you really close to it all. You know, one side gives you all the port stuff, the uh, sideboards, what they do, how you read them, how you deal with it. The other side gives you a bunch of the character abilities and stuff. So they're, they're pretty, they're pretty good. I think that, uh, there's much harder iconography out there. This one's not so bad. So anyway, thanks again. I really appreciate you uh, watching and whatever you do in the future, I really hope you have a fantastic time doing it. Take it easy, everybody.